Well, let's go to the first picture that we have. And what I tried to include in this, this series is uh, a sort of how the picture was taken, the position of the, the lights. Now what I've got are four speed lights are actually mounted in what's called a four square. And the four square has a soft box. And uh, my assistant, uh, Steve is just uh, actually holding them out over the half pipe. The athlete is uh, X Game champion uh, John O'Shawn. He's a uh, champion in the half pipe, and in the mini mega. I think it just first of all shows you just how close the lights are are to him. But the other thing to notice is how sort of underexposed the general scene is, and then we reilluminate him with off camera light. Now I'm obviously. Uh, and that's to get the the clouds in the sky by exactly. I don't want the the, the clouds in the background to be as bright as my athlete. Mm -hmm. If the if the background the general scene uh, is underexposed by a stop or maybe even two stops, then when I re uh, illuminate the athlete with uh, speed lights, um, he comes forward. He pops out of the picture a lot more. It's a creative kind of lighting, but we're freezing the action. And there's the end result of that picture. Um, so it, it has like almost a studio, a surreal studio feel to it. It's essentially, it's a portrait, except the guy's moving. Yeah. Right? And so uh, we're at like two thousandth of a second shutter speed on this. Um, the lights, as you saw, were probably about four or five feet away. Mm -hmm. And this is, um, I think this is about 10, 10 o'clock in the morning. So, you know, we're competing sort of against the sun. My speed lights are actually causing the light on the, uh, to be the brightest side of his face. That's from my speed lights. So we are overpowering not only the sun, but, you know, the entire ambient scene is, is darker than you normally would have it. That's what makes the athlete come forward, which is what your pictures are supposed to do. You're supposed to attract people to want to get into that picture, and this certainly does it with light. And it tells an incredible story. I mean, his face, everything, what he's doing, that moment mm -hmm. you captured, wow. <laughs> um, this is motocross. Mm -hmm. The same principle is applied. Now, there's a couple other things. We've got, I mean, look at how dark the background is. This is mm -hmm. about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. But I've underexposed the scene by almost like two and a half stops. So it looks very dark, like, wow, the clouds become more powerful. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually using a, um, a very cool blue-white balance. I use the Kelvin scale, and I'm down at 30-30 Kelvin. It's even cooler, if I remember. Um, so 30-30 Kelvin gives us a tremendous blue sky and sort of a cobalt blue background. I use the warming gel. It's an orange warming gel that uh, over the front of the speedlight. Nikon gives you those. If you're a Canon user, you have to go buy a... <laughs> A gel, but it's called a full CTO. Okay. Right? So you're all set. Put that over the front. And that warm light now re-illuminates our uh, motorcyclist uh, with a warm, almost sunset feel, uh, a, t a color of light. Um, let's go to the next one, and you'll see the setup for this one. There okay. it is. And one of the things I emphasized to my class today was how, you know, well, where do you put the lights and how, how many degrees and is it a you know, 45 degree angle and all this kind of stuff. I go, ah, that's way too complex to me to think about that. I said, I just make a triangle between myself, the subject, which is the motorcycle rider, and the lights. And you can easily see the triangle here. Here's the photographer. Mm -hmm. Here's the bike. Point two and point three is way up on the hill there. Um, four speed lights are being used. They're just up on a, a monopod um, held in the four square bracket. And then, of course, the picture we just saw previously was the end result of it. In other words, that off-camera light. That's the key to it. People mm -hmm. have their lights right next to them when they're doing this. And that, you want to get them away from you. You want, you want them separated so that they're, the, the light is coming in from a different angle. That's what makes it look interesting and reveals all the texture of the bike and the uniforms and mm -hmm. so forth. Well, yeah. and even if you're not um, you know, an action shooter, you can apply this technique that you're using, the, playing with your color temperature on your camera, mm -hmm. and then using the gels on a speed light and doing some incredible portraits at a different time sure. of the day. And, th and think of that, how, how you can set yourself apart and play with that and just have fun with it. I mean, you, you don't have to be an action shot to learn some of this. You can apply it to some other things and make some incredible shots that you never thought you could make. Uh, you really can. I mean, this same principle can be applied if you're shooting flowers, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. Portraits, mm -hmm. landscape. Yes, landscape can be lit, and I <laughs> yes, do them, can. right? I light <laughs> them up. Um, so all these principles apply to other genres of photography, for sure. So I'm big on this triangle, right? I'm in this boat. My athletes 
over there and my lights are over there. There's my, this is a darn big triangle now, mm -hmm. okay? So I have my three points, myself, my subject, and my lights. Let's see what the end result looks like. And there's our wake border. So he has off-camera light. And I think you probably heard the term um, Rembrandt lighting. Mm -hmm. I think if you look closely at his face, it's actually Rembrandt lighting. There's a little triangle of light coming right underneath the eye there. <laughs> I know he's upside down, <laughs> but essentially recreating very, uh, very good portrait mm -hmm. lighting setup, except that it's action, it's moving. I've underexposed the general scene, I've underexposed the ambient light, and that really saturates and you know richens the color in the sunset. It's now this super deep gold. And then I re-illuminate my subject with some light, off-camera light, of course, coming from another boat. Now, I decided to put a couple of these in here because it's like, well, what happens if my speed lights aren't powerful enough? You know, they're only going to reach so far. Mm -hmm. They're a small, very portable battery operated unit. Um, what else can I do if I need to have my lights farther away from the athletes for maybe for safety? It's like, well, why do you need them farther away? Well, the flying objects are going through the air. There's a soccer ball flying through the air. You don't want your lights to get hit, so forth. Um, I'm now using for the larger uh, um, uh, sports uh, action that I do with lights, uh, the Pro Photo B1s. Just started using them. Actually, uh, uh, here at Photoshop World, it's the 12th of August, actually. And I've been using the Pro Photos now for about three weeks mm -hmm. um, and, and loving them. They, they allow me to do something. So here's our triangle again. Here's my. Uh, athlete. Mm -hmm. Here are my lights set up. It was raining a little bit that day, right? So we've got an umbrella over our, our, our uh, Pro Photo B1. And let's go to the actual picture made. There you go. The ball just coming off the bat. And the, the strobe just about freezes the ball. We can see the laces, you mm -hmm. know, the stitching on the ball, almost read the, in, the, the inscription on the ball. Uh, the guys just hit the ball. And uh, the strobe has frozen it, you mm -hmm. know, pretty much. I've uh, Big storm was coming in uh, behind the player here, so we really underexposed the background. It's almost like a surreal studio. Um, it's a most unusual. It's a very common thing in baseball for people to hit the baseball <laughs> with a bat. Yeah, yeah. It happens a million times every game. But to light it up like this makes a feature picture or an advertisement, perhaps uh, in this case, uh, this was a class that I was teaching at the Summit uh, Sports Workshop. and. Um, yeah, so this is just a, a whole different, uh, no pun intended, ball game, <laughs> so to speak. But, uh, boy, it really opens up a lot of possibilities, some beautiful sports pictures. That's amazing. Cool. I, I love it because I'm just getting ideas in my head. There you go. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> this one was taken just last week. This is mm -hmm. uh, at, at another um, uh, event that we were doing. And one of the nice things about when you start using lights Athletes will come out and do things for you that they maybe wouldn't care about. It's like, well, people have taken pictures of me before. What do I care? Oh, no, we're going to have lights out there. This is, again, with the Pro Photo B1s. It's high-speed sync, just mm -hmm. like we did with the speed lights, except I wanted the light to be a little farther away from the athlete because I didn't want the ball to hit the light. And I wanted him to have a lot of uh, freedom to, like, hit the ball away if he had to. Yeah. This is at about 2 in the afternoon. We have, you know, underexposed the ambient light by, like, two stops, maybe two and a third minus two and a third and uh, sun is out but we have overpowered the sun and I have one uh, uh, pro photo b1 out in front of him and you can see that's what hit what's uh, lighting up the front of his face mm -hmm. the other pro photo uh, b1 is almost behind him so it's lighting up sort of just behind his ear and the back side of his jaw a little bit okay. so it's very classic cross light that you would use in a portrait mm -hmm. except that he's a goaltender uh, you know defending a shot here and what you'll find is when you start doing these kinds of pictures that instead of using a 200 millimeter lens or 300 or 400 or 600 millimeter lens, which is typical for sports photographers, this is shot with a 16 to 35 millimeter lens. At six, that was my next question. This is a wider angle lens. That's right. And so now I'm using 16 millimeters. I'm laying on the ground. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you right now, as a sports photographer, you think it's exciting to be at a ball game, use a 400 millimeter lens. Wait till you start going to something using a 16 millimeter lens. You're this close to the athlete. Think how close I was to the skateboarder. Wow. That's exciting stuff. And so these are these are obviously contrived or set up shots. These yeah. are feature pictures that you do for magazines or for commercial clients. And it really 
it is exciting to get. I mean, his knee is only a couple feet away from me, and the ball comes like whizzing in, you know, from a kick, you know, over the top. So that is exciting stuff. You're more worried about your equipment getting damaged than you getting damaged. Is I, what I'm hearing. I don't care about me getting damaged as long as I get the picture. That's, that's exactly. what I'm concerned about, and so uh, that's probably the client's concern too. Awesome. Well, you're like we mentioned before, you're an icon ambassador. I I am thrilled because I love lessons like this when. You know, I'm not a sports photographer, but learning about how you make your techniques and how you set up your shots, I'm excited to go try it in my genre of what I do just mm -hmm. for the excitement and that creativity because it almost like reboots that, I need to go out and shoot something right now. Like I want to go out and do it and it's exciting. And Now, Dave, where can we find you? Uh, my website is a good place to go, mm -hmm. right? It's daveblackphotography.com. Mm -hmm. Just look on the menu there and uh, something that might be interesting uh, is uh, actually the uh, skateboard shoot that we did. Mm -hmm. um, you'll see that there's a behind the scenes video. That is a three minute behind the scenes video of how I did the photo shoot there mm -hmm. with uh, uh, John O'Schwan mm -hmm. and uh, skateboarding. Uh, there's my workshop at the ranch. That's my instructional blog. That's the monthly article that I write. Uh, that's very detailed instruction. It's all teaching orientated. Mm -hmm. And uh, my own uh, actual light painting workshops that I do are also listed there. So uh, that's that's sort of the departure from sports for me is my light painting. <laughs> and light painting um, is so fun. It is a lot of fun. Just what, the artistic approach to photography. I just love it. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And, and I look forward to seeing more of you this year. Great. Thanks so much for having me on the show.